What's in the box? 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 Oh, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the box. I mean, the shop. If you're new here, this is our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG and we're turning it into an overland camper. If you're interested in more information on how we've been building this camper, check out the other videos on this channel. But for now, let's find out what's in the box. A couple of days ago, these boxes showed up on my front porch and I did not get a notification from Amazon that I'd received a delivery. And that can only mean one thing. Fresh off the boat, Chinesium. <laughs> These are 320 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cells. And as you can see, I've got a bunch of them. I wanted to get these into my hands before I started building any of the structure that goes around them. So I'm really glad they're finally here because it would be really annoying to build all of the interior furniture and then find out that the battery size was off by just a little. Of course, I knew what size they were supposed to be. It's just not worth the risk of them showing up a little different. With so many buyers to choose from, it's kind of hard to know what you're actually gonna get. But so far, physically, they appear to be good. Now these batteries did also come with some nice nickel plated and insulated bus bars, some stud and nut hardware, boots to protect the terminals, some dielectric shielding material to put between the cells when you build your battery packs, and some heavy duty tape to keep them secure. Uh, wh why do they need tape to keep them secure, you ask? Well, if they're not adequately restrained, lithium iron phosphate cells can swell. And when the cells swell, it can lead to increased internal resistance, leading to reduced energy storage capacity, lower voltage, and overall reduced life cycle. So more than just dropping them in place, we need to make sure they're tightly secured. LIFEPO4, or lithium iron phosphate, is a type of battery cell that is commonly used in solar storage, electric vehicles, and portable electronics. Now it's important to understand the difference between cells and batteries. These are cells. Cells consist of a couple of key components. The anode or the negative terminal, the cathode or the positive terminal, and then an internal electrolyte. There's a lot more going on than that, but let's try and keep it to the basics for this video. The electrolyte can be something as simple as salt water. It's a substance that's usually a liquid and it allows ions to flow between the cathode and the anode. This flow of ions inside the battery is the other half of the electrical circuit that's driving your components on the outside of the battery. And that brings us to batteries. Batteries are a collection of individual cells linked together in parallel or series. Each of these cells has a natural charged voltage of about 3.65 volts. So if you imagine yourself traveling through this circuit, if you enter into the battery here and exit here, you will have a difference of 3.65 volts. If we put four of these together and you have to travel through all of them, you now have 14.6 volts. Now, if we rearrange this circuit so that all of the negatives together and all of the positives are together, you don't need to travel through every single battery. You can just skip across. Therefore, we maintain the 3.65 volts, but the capacity increases. Makes sense. If you put cells or batteries in series, your voltage increases. If you put cells or batteries in parallel, your capacity increases. Now, a 3.2 volt battery with about a thousand amp hours isn't really going to be much use to us. So what we want to do first is put them in series and then put the series in parallel. And if I do it like this, I'll get 14.6 volts per row of batteries and a total battery capacity of about 960 amp hours. Yes, 960 amp hours or about 14 kilowatt hours. Is that enough or do I need more power? More power! It's like watching Top Gear. As a quick comparison to previous battery technologies, these two Trojan SCS-225s have about half of the rated capacity of the same size of lithium. And that's rated capacity. You do not want to discharge those to the same level. So at a 50% discharge, those two Trojans have about a quarter of the capacity of the lithiums. But batteries are heavy, so what about the weight? Well, a pair of Trojans weigh in at about 120 pounds, and with 12 of the lithium cells, we come in at about 24 pounds more, a total of 144 pounds. So effectively, we're talking the same physical size, 
20% more weight, and four times the power capacity. Now, to be fair, they do also cost significantly more money, but they also have a significantly higher expected life cycle. So all of these are reasons that I've decided to go lithium. Now let's get them inside. Now, obviously, I'm not just gonna have them sitting loose like that. They need to properly be assembled, be wrapped so they can't expand, have the bus bars on, have the circuit protection, have the BMSs connected. BMS, that's a battery management system that makes sure that each of the cells voltage within the battery pack stays balanced and that the cells don't overcharge, over discharge, or overheat. There's a long way to go. But now I can play with the configuration, whether I want four straight lines, if I want them standing or on their sides. Because once this floor section is built, I'm still gonna need to be able to access them to be able to check the connections, tighten the terminals, and make sure that the batteries are still in good condition. And the last decision, do I really wanna do 12 volts or do I wanna add more and go 24 or 48? If you were working with these batteries, what would you do? Throw a comment down below to let me and everyone else know. The biggest thing for me at this point is now that I have the size, I can play with the raised floor section here and the two seat benches that are gonna go on either side. But that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.